Ones, all right. Yes, sir. All right. So let us start now. So this is 2008 question one. So 2008 question one. It starts, of course, you know, them like to start the paper fairly easy. So let's zoom in a bit. It says differentiate the following function with respect to x. So you have e to the four x cost by x, so let us start. So if you want, you can call it y, right? So let's start, we can, number one, we can say y is equal to e to the four x times the cost of pi x. So we're gonna differentiate this using product rule. So what we're gonna get is dy by dx is product rule, nothing simple, nothing hard. Keep the first, Keep the first e to the 4x. Then we multiply it by the differential of the second. When you differentiate cost, you get minus sine. So that's going to be minus sine pi x. But then you multiply it by the derivative of pi x, which is pi. So we can write minus sine pi x. That's what we get when we do that. Then we know plus keep the second. Cos pi x, then we multiply it by the derivative of the first. So then multiply it by four times e to the four x. And that's the answer. Of course, I can't leave your answer like that. You need to simplify it. So to simplify it, what I'm going to do is what we can do is factor out e to the four x and leave our answer pretty. So factoring out e to the four x, Factor out e to the 4x, we're going to left back with minus pi sine pi x minus pi sine pi x plus then 4 cos pi x, 4 cos pi x. Nice. So the of course question one now not hard in night. This one easy, right? Easy four marks, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, nice. So that's the first one. That's this right here, part A. So four marks. Them start the paper nice. That's what I like about long time paper. Question one usually start really nice. So then it's really the module two and module three hot. Now this one no, no say so ln x squared plus one over root x. Let's do it on a separate sheet. Number two, ln in bracket, x square plus one over the root of x. Now to do this, it look like it might be challenging, but look what a lot of people don't understand. Or a lot of people always seem to make this mistake. They're trying to differentiate this and they're trying to Write one over this and then multiply by the derivative of this. No, please don't try to do it that way. What I want you to do is always break it up using rules of logarithm, right? Don't try to be a hero. Don't try to use quotient rule with this. That's crazy. Break it up as the log of A over B is the log of A minus the log of B. So we can break it up as ln x squared plus 1. And then we have minus ln root x minus ln root x. That's how we can break it up. So let's call this y now. So y is actually equal to all of this. Oh, ln. sir, you said that you, instead of just go straight into it with um, quotient rule, you just divide, you Break simply. it up. We simplify it first using laws of logarithms, simplify it to an easier expression. Okay. All right? Yes. So we're using laws of logarithm to simplify it. Anytime you see the log of a quotient, use the rules of logarithm. So we rewrite it as ln x squared plus 1. And then we just write now ln root x 
Remember, root x is x to the half power. So we can write this as minus a half ln x. Now you might be wondering how I get this minus a half ln x, right? Wonder how I got this? Um, because with root, I think it's it's because of the root you changed it. Yes, yeah, so change the root x to x to the half, but by laws of logarithm, we know we can carry down the power they don't. Yes. Yes, nice. So now we can differentiate normally. So now we can differentiate it normally to get that dy by dx is equal to differentiating log functions, it's one over x squared plus one. Then we multiply it by the derivative of x squared plus one, two. which is two, two x, two x. Not just two, two x, all right? Two x minus a half, always keep a constant, minus a half times the derivative of ln x is one over x. So look how the answer work out easy and pretty man to see it here. dy by dx is just two x over x plus one minus one over two x. That is it. Easy, soft, easy. Oh, sir, I have a question. When you change over the, the root to the half, yeah. It's supposed to be negative a half ln x to the, to the half, right? Negative so a x, half. Why would you get negative a half? No, not, not negative a half. I mean, at the bottom, it would say minus a half ln x to the half power. Which, which line is that? At the line that you're on. This line? So minus, yes, minus a half ln x to the half, right? No, listen what we did. This minus a half ln x to the half. No, they, they ignore the half right here. What we did was this root x, this root x is x to the half, right? Yes. But by laws of logarithm, we can bring down the power. Instead of putting the half here, we can put bring down the half down oh. here. All right. Um, yes, so that's know. what we did, all right? And then we can differentiate it, all right? Cool it yes, this one? Nice. I, I, I got a calculator that can do the complex numbers, differentiation, integration. Repeat. I got a calculator that can do the complex numbers, differentiation, and integration, and stuff like that. All right, cool, 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 good. All right, nice. All right, wonderful. I'm so happy to hear. So we'll book any, any those sorts of questions, you can definitely see it, all right? Or we'll use a calculator. Nice. Now look at this one now, Marika. It says, given that y is three to the minus x, show by using logarithms that dy by dx is minus three to the minus x ln three. All right, so that's, it says show by using logarithms, meaning you have to take the logs of both sides. So then tell me, y is equal to 3 to the minus x. So the first thing you have to do is take the log of both sides and write ln y is equal to ln of this side, ln 3 to the minus x. But by rules of logarithm, we can bring down the power. So that is then telling us that this is minus x, ln 3 is equal to ln y, right? Yes, sir. Now we can differentiate both sides with respect to x. So that's what we're gonna do now right here. We're gonna differentiate both sides with respect to x, d by dx of this entire equation. When you differentiate ln y with respect to x, we cannot differentiate with respect to x. So we have to do implicit. When we differentiate ln y, we get one over y, but then we multiply it by dy dx, right? I uh, forget implicit equal to now think of ln3 as a constant when you differentiate ln3 times x you just get back left back with the ln3 so just put a minus ln3 call it this yes sir then now look at this we need dy by dx to be the subject so we can multiply through by y 
So, so dy you, by dx. Oh, sure, sorry, sorry. So with the negative ln3, you differentiate the x, right? Yes, think, think, okay. think, of, think of ln3 as a constant k. If you have minus x times k or kx, what would you get? Just the minus k, though? No? Yes, sir. All right, so that's how we get minus ln3, right? Understand. Nice. So then now we we'll multiply through by y. And so now we get minus y ln3. But then guess what? Guess what, Marika? Y was what? 3 to the minus x. So that means dy by dx is minus 3 to the minus x ln3. And see it there? Now we we'll show it. This is dy by dx. All right, so just to write it off in one line, see it there? We end up get dy by dx is exactly what them did want, which is minus 3 to the minus x ln3. All right, so so far, so good, right? Yes, sir. Nice. So you can see them testing all our differentiation skills. So far, mm. them testing. I, can, I realize that the paper module one seems easy. When I, when I was looking upon the recent papers, module, yeah. they put harder questions in there. In module one? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I guess what they did in, the, in these papers was they made module two and module three so difficult that module one was easy. But in the, old, in the newer papers, module one is more challenging, but then the front, the back part, so easy, right? So it balanced all back, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now this one now says, express this in partial fraction. I know you have this topic down pat. All right, I know you have this one done, but so let's quickly run through that one. We don't really want to look at the partial, we want to go to the integration part of it. So the partial was 2x minus 2x squared minus 3x, and I think that's plus 4, that's plus 4 over x minus one and that is being multiplied by I think x squared plus one. X squared plus one. All right, nice. So now let's separate this in partial fraction. We know that the, the linear factor part, we're just gonna have a constant a over x minus one for the linear part, but for the quadratic part, we realize this is an irreducible quadratic. Anytime it's an irreducible quadratic, you have to write bx plus c, can't forget that, over x squared plus one, right? You see. All right, so this paper testing all our knowledge, x squared plus one. So now, of course, we just do our LCM and the LCM is going to be x minus one times x squared plus one. So now we've got x minus one into this is x squared plus one. So what this works out to be now is a times in bracket x squared plus one. And then we'll go plus bx plus c times x minus one. And that's equal to all of this over there. So now what we can do is of course equate numerators. Equating numerators. All right, so equating the numerators, we're gonna have this quadratic right there, two x square, two x square, minus 3x plus 4, and it's going to be equal to this numerator right here. So we can just expand out this numerator, and we're going to get a times x squared is ax squared plus a times 1 is a. Then we have this quadratic part to expand bx times x, that is bx squared, 
then we have bx times minus one, that is minus bx. Then we have c times x, that is plus cx. And then we have c times minus one, that is minus c. All right, cool. So now we're just gonna equate our like terms with the two x squared, ax squared and bx squared. So equating the x squared term, this is for the x squared terms. For x squared term, we'll see that two x squared, we can ignore the x squared and just write two is equal to a plus b. That's equating our x squared terms. Then now equating our x terms, what we're gonna get is negative three is equal to, this is a minus bx plus c right here. So negative three is minus b plus c. Then equating our constants, c o n con for constants, four is equal to, that's gonna be a minus c, right? A minus C. Agreed with that? Yes, sir. All right. So now we have three equations and three unknowns. Now, again, Marika, you can solve it any way you want. You know, so much ways to solve it. Elimination, substitution, Kramer's rule. Anything you want, you can do. But I'm going to stick with my elimination. Two is equal to A plus B. Going around here, minus three is B plus C. Going back around here, we have four is A minus C. Four equal to A minus C. So what we're going to do is I quickly realize that from these two equations, I can eliminate C by adding them. So I'm gonna add them to eliminate C by adding them, what I get is minus three plus four, that give me negative one equal to, adding them here, I get, is that negative one, negative three? No, that's not negative one. Minus three plus four is actually one. So I get one is equal to, did I write down this equation, right? Oh, it's minus B. Minus B. So adding them, I'm going to get minus 3 plus 4 is 1. Minus B plus A is going to be A minus B. Tell me if this makes sense, Marika. You see what I did? You follow? Yes, sir. I understand. All right, good. So now after we add this equation, I eliminated C. We end up get 1 equal A minus B, and we have 2 equal A plus B. So now since to eliminate C, we can eliminate B now. Eliminate B by adding again. So add again, and now we get three is equal to, two plus one is three, A plus A is two A. So three is equal to two A. So divide both sides by two. So A equal three over two. Good, A equal three over two. If A equal three over two, we can subtract three over two from two. And just by looking at it, that's clear as daylight B have to be half. B have to be half, because three over two is one and a half. One and a half minus a half is one. And one and a half plus a half is two. So that's clear as daylight B is a half. Now we need to find C. To find C, let's go in this equation. So remember that four is equal to A minus C. In other words, that is telling us that C is equal to four minus A. C is equal to, bring over this, bring over this. No, I'm lying. But bring over this, that's C plus four. Bring over this A minus four. C is equal to A minus four. And that is one and a half minus four is minus two and a half. That would be minus two and a half, which is minus five over two. Minus five over two. So now that we find A, B, and C, now we can complete this. We can actually rewrite it now and tell them that this is equal to A over X minus one. A is three over two. Now look where you can write this now. You can write this as, instead of write three over two in the numerator, 
right three in the numerator and put it over two times x minus one all right you don't need to put you don't need to put three over two in the numerator and then divide it by x minus half we don't need to make it look so ugly we want it to look proper then we're going to have plus bx plus c b is a half c is minus five over two so again, you see them two here, you don't need to put it in the numerator. So instead of putting a half here, so you're gonna just put one X, which is just X minus C was five over two. So you're just gonna put the five here, but then you're gonna put the two here, so in the denominator and bracket it with X plus one. You understand why we put the two there and bracket it? Yes, sir. All right, good. So this is what we get. All right, so this is so far. Nice. Of course, no one next them going to ask it to do. Hence, integrate. That's just how they usually ask it. So discovered. Now they're going to say hence, integrate. So now they're asking us to find. Now we need to find the integral of 2x squared. minus 3x plus 4 over x minus 1. Times x square, x square plus 1. All right, dx. This is what we need to find now. All right, nice. Now, that is then going to be equal to the integral of, remember we had split it up in partial fraction, it was a, a we had found to be three over two times x minus one, plus, and then over here, so now was bx plus c, which you can break it up as plus the integral of, this is then x minus five, over two times x squared plus one. This is what we're integrating. All right, nice. So let's go ahead and integrate now. What we're gonna get is, you see this part, whenever the differential of the denominator is in the numerator, it's L in the denominator. But two times x is two x, because if you're expanding this two, this is two x, this is two x, minus two, right? Look what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you expand in the two, this is really two X minus two, right? Right? Right, Marika? So we need a two in the numerator. So catch how we're gonna get the two, catch this style. We're gonna put times a two here and put a half on the outside. So you see those type of things? I don't understand how I would look at them and know what to do. What do you mean? Like what you said, like, let's put a two there and put a half over there. No, look why we can do that. We can do that because in reality, Marika, let me use a different color. A half times two is what? Let me show you then. Let me go a little slower so it makes more sense. So this is what we have. Look at this now, Marika. If I were to write two over two, did I change anything? Did I change anything if I put two over two? Times no, because it's still, it's, it's one. Just, exactly, but look at this, Marika. If you have a fraction like five over eight, and you change it, and you, you multiply it by two over two, you don't change nothing. But Marika, what we do know is that fractions, you multiply across their numerators. So this, I am telling you then that I could even flip it now and put the five over the two, and multiply it by two over eight. Wouldn't them two eight give me the same thing? These are yes, giving me the same answer, don't you? Yeah, that's all we do, you know. That's literally all. Don't stress about it, about not understanding. You just have to see that all we're doing is we're just, we're just doing some gymnastics. Put two over two. So we can, what we can then do is switch the three and switch the two. So what we're gonna do is, you see that two here, we're gonna move it. 
So the tree we're gonna move it. We're gonna put the tree here and then put the two here. That's all we're doing. All right, so we don't change anything. Because in reality, this two still cancel this two. And then when the tree come back in, it's still the original question. You get what I'm saying? That makes sense? Yes. yes sir. All right, so what we're gonna end up get is this is then now three over two times ln the denominator. ln in bracket two x minus two. All right, plus, we need to integrate this now. We're gonna do the same. Now talk to me, Marika. What can I what am I gonna multiply up here by now? Um what? you can multiply uh, what's the differential of the five? denominator? Oh. What's the differential of the denominator? If I were to expand in the two. This would have been 2x squared plus 2, right? 2x uh, squared the plus 2. Okay. So it would have been um 4x. Beautiful. So 4x is the diff there's a differential at the denominator. So what do I need to multiply by? Oh, you, so you, do you need to use like five, like five over? No, no, one, no, one no over. four, you just told, you just told me four, the differential is four. We need a four X in the numerator. We need a four X in the numerator. How are we gonna get the four X? By multiplying by four over four. We needed a two in the numerator. So multiplied by two over two. We need a four in the numerator. Sorry, but that's by three over, over two. Yeah, remember why the three over two is here and there was a three on the inside. Yeah. So we had to swap the three with the two. We don't need to swap anything this time around over here. Okay. All right, so if, it, if it's a six X squared it down here, so that Is it means- Would it six over six? No, if it's a 6x squared in the denominator, what would be the differential in the numerator? 6x squared, 12x, so 12 over 12. 12, 12 over 12, they get in the gist now, exactly. All right. So, but why did you swap the three and the two? We had to swap the three and the two because we'll multiply by two over two right here, Marika. Look at this. When you have two over two here and the three here, you can't use ln when the differential of the denominator is not in the numerator we needed the, the numerator to be when you differentiate in order to get ln right mm -hmm. the, diff, the, diff, the derivative of the denominator has to be in the numerator yeah what's the derivative of ln 2x minus 1 ln 2x it's two It'd over two, two x exactly. Oh. So where this so where this three at the air? So we can't integrate out of the three. No, one two for the air. So, uh, okay. But so we, you're we, you're saying that with this you have to have like the differential of the ln in the of. in in the numerator. Yes, that's always the aim. Get the derivative of the denominator in the numerator. So when you integrate it, you can get ln. Okay. So then right. for the other one, the reason why it wasn't changed is because it's x minus 5? Yes, it's x minus 5. So we just need a 12 point. We just need a 4 point the x. Yeah? Okay. So that's why. So if we put the 4 over 4 here, we can then... Put a one here, sir, so, and bring in the four on the inside. So now we have four X minus 20. So now when we integrate that, we'd have a quarter, because we have a quarter left back on the outside. Now we'd have a quarter LN, the denominator. Yeah? Yes, sir. All right. Then always remember when you integrate, 
it's indefinite you put plus c all right yes, all right nice all right so that would have taken care of question one now marika we started at 506 that means we'll do 28 minutes on this question that's not good let me tell you why that's the speed at which you have to be working in an exam of course you can write a little faster because i'm writing on the screen in the exam 25 marks is for 25 minutes. So you want to try to do every question in 25 minutes to finish the paper, all right? That's that's if we want to finish the paper, but for the every question in 25 minutes, all right? I'm not telling you this to scare you. I'm just telling you this so you work with time in your mind, all right? Cool with that? You see? You Yes, I'm just telling you it so you can bear time in your mind that, wait, I need to always try to finish each question in 25 minutes. Some question you might finish faster, like this easy one here. This is solve the differential equation dy by dx plus y equal e to the 2x. All right, nothing wrong with this. And of course, you know, you're going to get your mock exam that will be similar to this tomorrow. Nice. So we have dy by dx plus this right here is y, dy by dx plus y equal e to the 2x. This is a very easy one. So this is a first order differential equation. And it's actually one that we can solve using the integration factor method. So step one, it's already in standard form, so we're good. So step two is to find the integrating factor i. The integrating factor i is equal to e to the integral of k dx, where k, remember that k is the constant that multiplies by the y. In this case, the constant is one. So we're finding e to the integral of one dx. And when you integrate one, you get x. So the integrating factor is e to the x. Step two now, we're going to multiply y times our integrating factor i, and then that is equal to the integral of your function of x, in this case it's e to the 2x, times your integrating factor i, dx. I'm telling you, Marika, it's the same thing we're doing over and over and over again. All right, we just have to have fun with it. So this is then just going to be y times e to the x because that's our integrating factor. And that's equal to the integral of e to the 2x times e to the x. But we know that e to the 2x times e to the x is e to the 3x. So what we're literally integrating is e to the 3x. e to the 3x. That's what we're integrating. Well, we integrate e to the 3x. So now I say, we add one to, the, not add one to the power. When we integrate e to the three x, we get e to the three x and divide it by three. Then we put plus some constant c, and that is y times e to the x. Then now, finally, step should be the step four. The last step is make y the subject. To make y the subject, we divide two by e to the x. So end up get y is equal to e to the 3x divided by e to the x is going to end up with e to the 3x minus x because when the bases are the same, we subtract one from the power. Just so it makes sense, I'm going to actually show you the canceling out. I usually skip out that step, but I want it to completely follow. So my apologies. All right, sometimes I skip out some steps, so I won't skip any step. e to the 3x over... This is then three times e to the x. As I tell you, we're dividing two by e to the x plus c over e to the x, not skipping any step. So what happened now is this e to the x cancels this e to the x. So end up get y is equal to e to the three x over e to the x. We can subtract one from the power to get e to the two x over three. This is then plus C times E to the minus X. This is our solution. 
All right. Call it this, Marika. We call it this. Yes, sir. Nice. So this is the first order differential equation. Easy. Now let's see what they say next. They said. They said that that's all. Whoa, that's all. Like part A done. Then say now the gradient of the at the point x y on a curve is given by dy by dx equal e to the four x. And they say, given that the curve passes through the point zero one, find the equation of the curve. Now, this is something known as separation of variables, Marika, that we haven't done, all right? We're gonna see how easy it is, all right? So I tell we say the second part, part two, it tell we say dy by dx is equal to e to the 4x. Actually, it's not separation of variables. It can be done by separation of variables, but it's not. Always remember, to go from y to dy by dx, we differentiate, oh, right? Right, Marika? Can you hear me? Yes, we so differentiate. To, so to go from dy by dx to y, what do we do? We, in, we do the implicit differentiation. We, inti we integrate. We integrate. If you have oh, y, what was what was this one say? If it's you go differentiation you, or integration. This is integration. When they give you okay. dy by dx, when they give you dy by dx to find y, you integrate. When you get y to get dy by dx, you differentiate. All right. Okay. Okay. So y is going to be equal to the integral of e to the four x. That's all will be y. Integrate dy by dx, integrate dy by dx, that give you y. Integrating e to the four x, we get e to the four x over four. And then remember that we add plus or constant k. Yeah? Pull it that? Pull it this, Marika? This is y? You call it this? Yes. Now we need to find k, but then tell us that the curve passes through 0, 1. So what we need to tell them is at 0, 1, at 0, 1. Tell them what happened at 0, 1. At 0, 1, y is 1. Say, so right, y, 1 is equal to e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1. So that's 1 over 4 plus some constant k. In that case, what we're gonna end up getting is that implies that k is actually equal to one minus a quarter, and one minus a quarter is three over four. So now you can finally give them an answer and tell them, say, so the equation of that line is y is equal to e to the four x over four, plus three over four, that's the answer, plus three over four. Easy, soft, nothing to it at all. No sugar, no spice, no nothing. All right, see, that's the answer. Cool it is? Yes, sir. Because if you differentiate but this, notice you get but dy by dx being e to the four x, good. All right, so that's that one right there. So we get off this, we get off this. The next part says integrate one from one to e of x squared ln x, writing your answer in terms of e, meaning it is literally saying um, they want you to give exact value for your answer. They don't want no, um, they don't want no, um, what am I trying to say? They don't want to, decimal answer they wanted to leave your answer exact so if you use a calculator that they're going to know the calculator is going to be used to help you verify that your answer is right so so of course i like to call them type of integral here i so we're integrating from one to e of what was that again x square ln x from one to e of x square 
ln x, this is what we're integrating, dx. All right, this is what we're integrating. So what we're going to end up getting now is i is going to be equal to, we have to use by parts, all right? This is where you have to remember i lead to rule. i lead to rule tells us that logarithms come before algebra. Logarithms come before algebra. So in this case, we're going to substitute our u as ln x. And then we're going to substitute our dv. So u is ln x. Then you differentiate ln x to get 1 over x. And so then our dv is x squared. And so our v is equal to x cubed over 3. All right, that's integration by parts. So remember, the formula would end up telling that I is equal to, remember, it is u times v minus the integral of v du. That's integration by parts. So it's going to be u times v, which is x cubed over 3 ln x minus the integral of v du which is minus the integral of, by the way, notice they gave us a limit on it from one to e. So you have to add on your limit from one to e. You can't throw away the limit. So it's the limit from one to e that will integrate minus the integral again from one to e of v du. v times du, Marika, if you multiply x cubed over three times one over x, one of them x, you're going to cancel that x out of this. So you're going to end up with x squared over 3. It's going to end up with x squared. If you're wondering how, look at it, Marika. If you're multiplying v times d, one of them x here, cancel out one of them x here. That's all we're saying. So it work out to be x squared over 3. So now we can finish off this now. So now we're going to end up get i is equal to, we we'll plug in e now, so we're gonna end up get e cube over three. Plug in the e here, so that's ln e minus, when you plug in one, when you plug in one, Marika, ln one is zero, so you're gonna get minus zero. Close that bracket. Minus, when you integrate x square, you get x cube over 3, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, 3, but then you have a 3 down there already, so you divide by the 3 times the 3, and we're integrating from 1 to e. We're integrating from 1 to e. So what we're going to end up get is ln e, Marika is 1, so we'll end up get e cube over over three minus, we can plug in over this side now, plugging in E over this side, we're gonna get E cube, E cube over nine minus, plugging in the one, one now, we're gonna get one cube, which is one over nine. This is what we're getting. So simplifying this now, Marika, now, this have a denominator of three and this have a denominator of nine. So what we're gonna do is rewrite this as, I'm gonna multiply this by three over three to get three e to the e cube and divide it by nine. No, Marika, this is the same as e cube over three. Because a three from this would cancel to be one and a three from this would cancel to be nine. But the only reason I write it like this is so I can have everything in one denominator. So now I can easily just subtract. So three minus one, that become two e cubed over nine, minus, minus and minus become plus, that become plus one over nine. That's your answer. So if you want to write it pretty, you can tell them say it's one over nine times in bracket, 2e cubed plus 1. That's your answer. All right? Now, I'm actually going to show you 
what the exact answer is using your calculator. Because since you have the calculator now, this is how you check your answer. So remember, you know, the calculator can't do the question for you unless it's paper one. You see, in paper one, Marika, this calculator is superb. When you get them question in a paper one, you know the answer already, don't you? You just, you just put in the calculator and work it out. Basically, on paper two, where they're looking for working, you now will get the marks. If them just say, put down the answer. That's just how paper two is. You're just not going to get the marks. All right, so I'm opening the calculator. So this was our answer. All right, open the calculator. We're gonna put it in right here now, the integral of, this is x squared. So see, you put it in here, alpha x raised to the power two multiplied by, this is ln x, so you put alpha again, x, close that bracket, close the bracket. So now we have our function. Now the upper limit was e, so press alpha, Wait, alpha then e, that one door, shift then e, yeah, shift then e, and it's just e, so I put e to the one, then down here is so supposed to be one. This is 4.57. That's 4.57. Now, since we get 4.57, we're we'll going to check if our answer was the same. So I'm going to check it now with this calculator. The answer we had gotten was 2 over 9 times, I think, E. I think it was E cubed plus 1. So we're gonna see if the two of them are 4.9, 4.57. All right, now this right here is 4.68, correct. All right, now we don't get exact answer because we did a substitution. This right here, the calculator is able to evaluate it exactly. So we're fine. All right, as you can see, this is what they're expecting you to get. So even if them say put this answer, them say, oh, we know say this person, use them calculator, all right? So see it there? That's the thing sometimes. Because we did use substitution, we won't get exact answers. So yeah, that's it. All right, so that's how we tackle this question right there. Or maybe I put it in the calculator wrong. I think I put in the calculator wrong. Maybe it is exactly it. Two was supposed to be there, and one was supposed to be here. Oh yeah, oh oh yeah, it's it's exact now. You see, Marika. Yes, sir. So exact answer we get. See there, four point five seven. Calculator answer four point five seven. All right. Our answer this are roughly four point five seven. So you can use a calculator if it's a paper one. But in a paper two, when them say leave the answer in terms of e. You can't get them 4.57. Them not seen an E. Them not even about to look on the paper, look at the question. Them those seen an E. Them not even look at the question. That's just how tough them are. All right. So that's that right here. You just have to remember by parts. We'd have to substitute this as U and this as DV. This as U. This as DV. And then we're done. So I you see all the answer exact. So you know, so correct. All right. No, Marika, the paper start get tough. This is where everything are gonna start get tough now. I can tell you, said so this integration it no normal. All right. And I am not, I'm not joking when I tell you that. Of many math teachers at my school right now, it's only the two Cape teachers were able to do this last one myself and my other senior teacher. Any other teacher in the school couldn't do it. Imagine, math instructors I mean, couldn't do it. If if they teach grade 11 or so, they don't need to know to do it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But remember, we did it in college. Oh, so you, you learn up to this? I thought you just learn um, up no, to no, the no, grade all, you teach. No, we learned all of these stuff straight up. To oh, Cape? 
Yes. No, you pass Cape. You, when you do college, when you're in university, you're going to have to do math, algebra, and all of this stuff. And you have to be at a higher level than that of which you're going to teach. Oh. So, say I'm, so say I'm going to teach Cape. I, my math skills need to be above Cape. It needs to be university level. Right. So if I want to be teaching at university, which I want to do in a couple of years' time, my my skills will then have to be above undergraduate to be at a master's level. And if I want to teach master's, I need to be at a PhD level. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, that makes sense. All right, so yes. So I'm telling you many teachers couldn't have done this question. So just know that for this for this question, a lot and of it's only students. worth five marks. Yeah, it's five marks, but it's tough. It looks it looks so easy, but it's it's not that easy. All right, we're gonna do some crazy stuff. So let's look at the next one. And bear in mind, Marika, you don't have to do it my way. There are many ways to do it. If you use symbol lab, it's gonna give you a different way from how I do it. But it's just how I see it easy to do it. All right. Remember, different instructors see it differently. All right. So it says using the substitution v equal one minus u integrate. We need to find the integral of one over the square root of one minus u du. And we need to use the substitution v as one minus u. So first thing I'm gonna do, call it i. And so Marika, um, they say use v equal to one minus u. So if this is v Marika, we need to write down dv by du. dv by du will be, when I differentiate this, I will get minus one. Because when I differentiate, V with respect to you, I get negative one, right? Right? Right, Marika? Yes, sir. So I can write that dv is minus one du. So what that means then now is I'm gonna substitute it and then write i is equal to the square root of, i is equal to the square root of one over now, you see the square root, one minus u is now v. So this is now the square root of v. And then du, I replace du with minus dv. Look at this, Marika. If, if dv is equal to minus one du, then if I multiply both sides by minus one or divide both sides by minus one, I would end up see that. If I divide both sides by minus one, I would end up see that du would be equal to minus dv. So I can replace du with minus dv. Now I can integrate with respect to v easily. But I can factor out this minus one and put on the inside of the integral to write minus the integral of one over the root, one over the square root of v is v to the negative half. So that's v to the negative half dv. Integrating this, Marika, what I will get is add one to the power to get v to the half, divide by the power of half, and have a minus that plus c. This is the answer. We can't leave your answer so ugly. Just know say minus one over a half is minus two. So that works out to be minus two v to the half. But v to the half is the square root of v. So that's minus two times the square root of v plus c. But the question never give you nothing with v. So you can't finish it off with v. You have to end up telling that i is equal to replace back v with u. And it was minus two times the square root of, this is then going to be one minus u plus c. That's the answer. Nice. This wasn't too bad. Right? What was this one? This wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad, but I can see where I would mess up. All right, so we'll just have to remain a little bit focused. It's not too bad at all. Now, this is the killer, killer one now we're going to look at. 
Time for the killer, killer one. All right, just three marks for that because it's that easy. But this one now is a hence or otherwise. I'm going to go otherwise. You see the hence, a little bit of university knowledge. All right. So I'm going to go otherwise. It's a integrate this now using the substitution u as sine x. Now, Marika, I'm telling you, this is not a boy thing. This is tough. So now I tell us, eh, we need to find the integral from 0 to pi by 2, integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the square root of 1 plus sine x. Now, Marika, you know my style already. What do I always tell you? When you say square root, what I always tell you must do? Change it to um, use laws of indices. No, that's not what I always say with square root. Um, I always tell you, rationalize, rationalize, uh, rationalize. Now you might say, sir, integration, why are you rationalize? That's just how tough this question is. We can't, that's probably what I was going to say to you, too, sir. Why would you need to rationalize? Are we integrating? Yes, but that's just how this question is. So we're going to rationalize. And we're going to multiply by the conjugate of this. So we have the square root of one plus sine x over one. So we're gonna multiply it by, it's not really the conjugate because we have a square root on it. We're gonna multiply by one minus sine x. And we're gonna do the same for the denominator, multiply by the square root of one minus sine x. All right, it seems crazy so far, but it won't be in a matter of moments. So now look at this now, Marika. This now what we're gonna get is, always remember, what is the root of A times the root of B? That's just the root of AB, though, yes. right? Yeah, man, the root of A times the root of B is the root of AB. So this is gonna end up work out to be the integral from zero to pi by two of, you see that one plus sine x times one minus sine x, in that part, now we're just going to get the square root of 1 minus sine square x. The 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. That's the difference of 2 squared, huh? I see. So we'll get the square root of 1 minus sine square over the square root of 1 minus sine x. Okay, beautiful so far. All right, beautiful. Now look what we're going to do now, Marika. What we're going to do now is... You see this one minus sine square, we're gonna change this to one minus sine square is cos square, right? So we're gonna get the integral from zero to pi by two off. One minus sine square is cos square. So integration, you have to know your identity then. We're gonna get cos square, our square root in cos square. When that's being divided by one minus sine x, all square rooted. Marika, we good so far? Yes, sir. All right, good. So this is what we have. Now, Marika, what we're going to do is when the square root cos square, we know so we're going to end up get the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of square root cos square, we get cos x. This becomes cos x over 1 minus sine x being square rooted. All right, now you might say, sir, you, you still not reach nowhere where the question look easy. Of course, now the question easy because I always tell you when the differential of the denominator is in the numerator, at some point we can LN. So I couldn't do nothing, like literally there's nothing I could do with the start of the question, but now it reached a form where I can put the denominator as U and I can actually see something gonna work out now. So look at this now, Marika. What, look what I'm going to call you now. This is where it gets a little crazy. So just follow now. We're still keeping it I. Sorry. I is the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cos x over the square root of 1 minus sine x dx. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the denominator be u. So I'm gonna call u, u is equal to 
1 minus sine x, u is 1 minus sine x, but not just 1 minus sine x, 1 minus sine x to the half. Because Marika, if I leave the square root, the square root might still give me some problem. So I'm going to substitute the denominator as u. If I substitute the denominator as u, look what I'm going to get for du. What I'm going to get for du then is carry down the power, which is 1 over 2, subtract 1 from the power, which will then become 1 minus sine x to the minus half. Then I multiply by the derivative inside the bracket. But the derivative of sine x is minus cos, don't it? Right? Yes, right, Marika? Yes. Yeah, so now, but Marika, anything to the minus half, I can rewrite all of this as du is minus cos x. This is now minus cos x over 1 minus 2 sine x to the minus half. Can go in the denominator. So I can put that as 1 minus sine x. In the denominator, this is du. And then to the half here, so I can just put the 2 right here. So, so this is du. Now Marika, oh, put on your dx. Now Marika, look at this. We have a dx right here, so. And we have limits with u. So of course, you're always going to need to change your limits. When you're using u substitution, you need to change your limit. So upper limit is going to become, if we're using u as 1 minus sine x, plug in the sine of pi by 2. 1 minus the sine of pi by 2. The sine of 90 is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 to, to the half is 0. So the upper limit is zero. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. And the new lower limit is going to be plug in, plug in zero in there. No, one minus the sine of zero is zero. One, one to the half is one. So the lower limit is no one. Now we can do our substitution now, Marika. No, we're good. So now, Marika, notice that we need minus cos x. 2 over 1 minus sine x dx. Now, we don't have a 2 in the original question, do we? No. So what we can do if we get a 2 in this denominator? In the denominator? Yeah, we need a 2. Look at this. Look at what is du. We don't have du in i up here. But we need this part to look like this so we can integrate it. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to put 2 sorry i'm going to put two over two right here do you follow yes sir. now if i put two over two right here marika this two in the denominator i can bring it on the inside it's still two over two in a bottom let's put in this two on the inside right so now two over one but this two can come on the outside any time right right yes sir no, I also need a minus in the numerator, don't I? Right? Yes, sir. So I can put a minus here and put a minus back on the outside so them cancel each other, right? Right, yes. Marika? Yes, very good. So now I is going to equal to... No, Marika, what is all of this? All of this is what? Now, do you this? Yes, so we're going to get minus 2 times the integral of, we'll change the limit. The lower limit is now 1. The upper limit is now 0. All of this is du. So you just get 1 du. Du is always 1 du. Now when you integrate 1, you just get u because you're integrating with respect to u. So we'll get minus 2 times u, and we're integrating from 1 to 0, though. This doesn't work out well easy. Yes. And then now you can plug in the zero right here. So, so you're going to get minus two times. Plug it in. Plug in the zero. You're going to get zero minus. Plug in the one right here. You're going to get one. Zero minus one is negative one. Negative one times negative two is two. So that's the answer. All of that work out to be two. Is this a discussion bad, don't 
Yes, sir. This was really nice. I'm telling you, Marika, I'm telling you literally, only like one person usually get these things right in, in Jamaica and probably about six person in the Caribbean. All right. And the only reason why I'm able to do this easily is because, as I said, I'm already finished with these questions from university. I'm telling you in high school, this would have mashed me up. Couldn't do it. All right. Plus sign X. Close that bracket. And this is from zero to pi by two. See it there? Oh, sorry. Um, my calculator need to be in radians to get the exact answer. Radians. Let me switch that to radians. Is it a two now? Yes, sir. All I right. can't believe I can't believe we do some of these calculations and we get these simple answers. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Now, 